And so I got myself one of these uh, laboratory DC power supplies off of uh, eBay. They, um, I've, I've read some reviews. They, people say that they're pretty, pretty reasonable. It's a 30 volt, two amp um, dual with a fixed five volt, uh, three amp supply that can be bridged in either parallel where you've got them both pushed in in series so you get um, 60 volts or independently so you have two independent supplies plus your 5 volt supply now um, let's uh, let's uh, pop these guys op this guy open and see if it's um, all that and a can of wax so when I was looking at the uh, pictures on eBay. Um, it was obviously not this one, or if it was this one, then it um, got damaged in shipping because it was really poorly packed. I have to say it was just flopping around inside a box with a very little bit of bubble wrap um, stuck in as a talisman more than anything. Um, it really wasn't protecting the unit very much at all. And so there was a couple of big dings on this side. And I just imagine that it got swung around in shipping. Now, having said that, um, I didn't pay a huge amount of money for this thing. I think it was on the order of, I, I want to say it was around 35 bucks. So I, I can check that plus some um, plus 20 in shipping. So, um, uh, that's us. So yeah, um, a pr pretty reasonable price if it's a reasonable unit. I mean, it compares to the cheap Chinese, um, prices anyways, whether or not, um, there's uh, a big difference in quality. Well, we'll take a, take a look inside and see what we get. Okay. So to get inside, it's the three screws at the bottom on either end. And then the, uh, the handle has to come off and then the lid pops off like that. Oh, what do we have here? We have a, yeah, a grounding lug. Let's pop that off. Get this out of the way. And oh, looks pretty clean inside. Looks very clean inside, in fact. And totally discreet. Not very many, uh, not very many ICs at all. Perhaps a couple of op amps. And yeah, nice gauge of wiring. Well, uh, well, sh he shrinked to, oh yeah, look at that. Dual connections to earth. Oh wait, no, this is earthing something else. Okay. Um, yeah. Very nice protection on the, uh, oh yeah, we've got a, probably what's inside there is, I don't know if you can see it, you can barely see it. Uh, maybe not poking around with something that's metal. <clears throat> Looks like a capacitor across the, the power switch to uh, help with noise. Um, two independent bridge rectifiers for each of the two channels. So we've basically got a um, slave up here. The master, I think, is this side, and we've got some division between the two. Um, what do we have over here on the other side? Oh, yeah, now we can get a good look at that honking transformer. Holy smokes, that thing's beefy. And this is going here. Yeah, this must be the 5-volt supply. And again, it's got its own... Um, collection of uh, diodes there. It's a bridge rectifier. It is a linear 5 volt power supply. It is not using any kind of uh, transformers that I can see. So yeah, that's power coming in. Um, we got some nice big beefy transistors. with the possibility to add another channel if you actually wanted to on on this big beefy power transistors um huh yeah that that looks quite nice actually uh quite nice indeed good robust 
PCB. I haven't investigated how that mounts in there, but... Huh. So far, I'm liking what I'm seeing in terms of build quality. It's a very good build quality. Those two power transistors are MJ51 15015s or BMO2010. Or is that manufacture date? 2010? February 2010, probably. And then what's down here? Well, that one looks like it's been replaced or some. At least it's not the same as the other ones. Huh. And there is some additional wiring. So that means that this transformer is used in other applications and they're just not making use of this um, set of windings. Oh, and here we have, oh look, it's even nicely labeled on the transformer what the various, what the various colors are and what they should be. So black is ground, brown is 100, red is 120, orange is also zero, and then there's yellow is 100, and blue is 120, so that's the two channels there. Probably the same thing, designations on the other side. <clears throat> now, input protection. What are they doing for input protection? Well, we've got uh, we've got a couple of relays here to begin with. There's, there's oh yeah, maybe there's some. This is the voltage switching uh, AC selection, so it allows you to switch between. 100, 120, 220, 240. So we've got this thing set for 120. Yeah, up and over. Yeah. Uh, Goodwill Instruments Co. Made in Malaysia. All right. Nice looking capacitors. What's the brand on them? SK. Reasonable. Uh, we've got some power resistors that are nicely lifted up from the board to dissipate the heat from, from them. Nicely lifted up. We've got some trimmer, max volts adjust, amps adjust. Probably the same thing on the other side. Uh, a couple of fuses on either end. And then 18018, is that 18018 in? And why 18 if it's a 30 volt power supply? It's an interesting question. I have to take a look at the schematic to see. Um, yeah, no, this, this looks like a very nicely constructed power supply. Um, far from cheap and Chinese, the, I mean, it is using you know, clip in standoffs here, but all the, uh, all the, uh, connectors are looking nice. It's got some decent cable management. They've taken care with, um, the grounding to, um, be crimped and then a spade connection. Now they could have bolted a, um, a crimped eye connection in, and that would have been more secure in my opinion but um i think spade lugs are just um they meet they meet their obviously they meet the requirements for for ul and or do they is it ul listed it is not no but it's c well that could be china export i'm not sure um it does not say ul listed but uh en 61010 one Maybe they have it tested internally. I don't know. Um, but it doesn't look to me, to the on the face of it, that it's going to cause any big problems if I put power onto it and see if it works. All right. Let's try that. All right. So it's plugged in. Let's power it up. Oh, let's turn on my power bar. There we go. We get the fans, the blinking lights, clipping current to constant current to constant voltage. 
Yeah, that seems to be working just fine. Um, if I parallel them, uh, current, this should do nothing. Yep, yeah, that now does nothing. Excellent. Yeah, you can hear the relays click. So yeah, both sides are going up. So 30 from there and 30 from there. And if I had a load, it would show that and this will do nothing. But now if I series them, uh, now I need to have, yeah, that's not gonna do anything, but this will. So right now we're getting extra voltage because we're in series, not parallel. Huh, very nice. Very nice. So far, so good. I guess we could check some voltages. Um, but um, I need to put a dummy load on there. And yeah. Next up. All right, let's get ourselves a little load onto this guy and see if it actually works. So that's a 10 watt, one ohm resistor. So um, let's make sure that we're, uh, whoops. Okay, on the master channel, let's give it a bit of current. Well, yeah, as it starts to draw current. So this guy's a one ohm resistor, so it's gonna draw lots of current. We can get her up to, well, yeah, at about, what is that? Mm, two and a half volts, two amps. So that's five watts. equals IR. No, two watts. And it's getting warm, that's for sure. So yeah, it looks like it's delivering the current that it's supposed to. How about the other channel? Let's crank that baby up. Get a little voltage. That channel, look, what does that look like to you? One, two, that's like three and a bit volts. So there might have to adjust the meters for zero. Yeah, this meter isn't zeroed at all. How's this, these meters? Uh, neither of those are zeroed either, so we could probably do that um, before we get anywhere. But both channels seem to be producing uh, current. Let's see if we can check their, the voltage that they're producing. Uh, okay, let's get our multimeter out. Uh, don't have to get too terribly accurate, I don't think. Let's just use the old... There we go. No, of course. There, now we can't see anything. Now, we can, now it's too bright. There we go. Can, can you see in there? Just barely. But it should be enough anyways. All right. juice. It should be 20 volts. It's 19.3. That should be around 30 volts. Well, out of range. 29.2. 5.8. 
Yeah, meters are pretty close. Try the other one. Some current, don't need that much. Yeah, this meter is much more accurate. That still needs a bit of zeroing. So yeah, I mean, plus or minus um, 0 0.3 on three, so that's 10%. That's what you would, guess what you would expect. And what is it putting out on the five volt rail? 5.04 volts. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Just need to zero the meters a bit. And I think you can, I mean, obviously, if you're gonna be worried about precision, with your voltages, you're probably going to um, want to have a voltmeter, an accurate voltmeter, but this gives you an indication of where you are in, in a range, and then you can tune them up a little bit. But uh, yeah, uh, I think we have a winner for 35 bucks Canadian plus a bit of shipping, um, rather than buying something that is cheap and Chinese. Thanks for watching.